what you just watched there was the famous internet pastor Marcus Rogers jumping up and down in service. He does this regularly and he does it a lot in his music videos, but it transfers over to his services. But the point I was showing you this is because I want to read something to you that he posted uh, a few days ago about what he did to a particular person that was visiting. Stay with me. Let me read read it and we'll talk. He says, I've always had many skeptical and religious people come to Firehouse. That's the name of his church. Or services in other states to observe what's going on. The Lord always points them out to me in the crowd is what he says. Many of them have heard this or that on the internet, but something told them to come anyway. Throughout the years, I've had hundreds of people apologize to me after sitting in one of our services. They say things like, brother, the Holy Spirit told me to apologize to you. I misjudge you because I've listened to what other people had to say about you on the internet. I just smile and hug them and tell them it's all good. Then they will often say some variation of, I have never felt the presence of God like that in this church ever in my life. And I smile and respond to them, me neither. The young man in the photo was in the back with his arms crossed. That's the guy in the thumbnail I was showing you, uh, that you see in the thumbnail where he's pointing. Everyone was sweaty from going crazy with worship, but he was kind of watching with a weird look in his eyes. I asked him, did he have a roar? Or did he have some type of fire inside? And he shook his head and said, no. And I could not see him, I could see he was skeptical, so I bought the whole church back to where he was and we worshiped around him. I knew he would feel the undeniable presence swirling around him because God inhabits, inhabits the praises of his people. This is what he says. Let me tell you, by the end of the service, he was at the altar smiling and clapping his hands. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's, it, it, it is silly. It is silly for you to be in Chicago and not stop by Firehouse at some point. You don't have to join, but if you are really about revival and the move of God, ain't no way that it's might, uh, what do you say? Ain't that way it's not happening in Chicago without Firehouse. God wanted this church here for such a time as this so that we might as well unite. We're going to take over the city in Jesus name. People can hate, people can slander, but they have been doing that, doing it for the last 10 years and we keep growing and the presence of God is with us. The best is yet to come. Now, you know, I've made several videos on Marcus Rogers. There's plenty of videos out there about him. I've shared my feelings about his doctrinal teachings and certain things that he does and his qualifications for pastor. We're not gonna get into that. We're gonna get into one thing, uh, one thing that I want to key in on. And before I go any further, for this message, I had to get the notes. I mean, because I, I I just wrote the things down and I don't want to forget what I've written down here. And it, it took me back when I was a young minister in training, when I was back in the days there. Um, and I remember as we approached Easter and I remember my pastor telling us, look, there's going to be people coming in for service. Some of them haven't been to church in a long time. A lot of them haven't maybe never been to church. Be mindful of the way you conduct yourselves up here in the pulpit. Don't shame anybody. That's what he would say. Things like that. We, we, we learned there's some, I mean, it was, I'm so thankful setting under men of wisdom, men that someone to guide me. Unlike a lot of these people you see now that's on the internet and all of these preachers and self-appointed prophets and all of them where there's no type of, I don't know who's mentored them or whatever, that is anything goes. And this is the type of thing. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm thankful that because I have on there, we should never shame anybody when it comes to the church. Now, as pastors and preachers and stuff, yes, we need to call out sin. And sometimes calling out sin it's not a popular thing to do, but there's a way to conduct yourself if you're going to want to be a pastor. As Marcus Rogers, if he wants to be this pastor, how shameful and how dare him 
single out somebody because they all jumping around and asking somebody, do you got a roar? You know, I mean, and, I, and it's just like, how sustainable is th this type of uh, uh, foolishness within the church? How sustainable? You know, I, he's in his mid to late 30s now. I don't know, how, uh, somewhere in there. But w you won't be able to do that in 30 more years. If you ain't got the word of God in you and able to preach and teach the right way. You ain't going to be able to be jumping and having all of these other members that are there too. Many of them will be, some of them are older than him or whatever age range. You ain't going to be doing it as you in some club somewhere. You're going to have to preach the word of God. And you don't point somebody out to shame them because they're not worshiping the way that you think that they should worship. And I have on here, it's unfortunate because we should never shame someone as much as as the way you know, it used to be a time, uh, 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 some churches still, and, and it's, I thank God has loosened up as they come as you are, as far as the way you dress and things. Um, uh, but you know, it used to be a time when, uh, a lot of people, uh, dressed up a lot more within church and stuff, but then they would look down on palm people that come into church, not dressed up. Now, you know, and these some of these folks that come in, they've never been to church. They don't have church clothes. I know when I got saved, I had hip hop clothes. I had the clothes of the streets. I came in. I mean, some of the stuff that I was wearing and uh, immediately um, no one never singled me out or said anything. I, I, I'm so thankful that my the church that I belong to did not do that. No one. They may have said something quietly, but no one never made me feel uncomfortable. I come in with flashy stuff. I remember we came in one time, me and my buddy. Uh, came in, and this was, uh, uh, it was New Year's Eve. We were ready to go party right after this New Year's Eve service. Go hit, hit the club. And I remember this girl saying, y'all be careful. Y'all be careful. What y'all getting ready to do? But the church was offering breakfast that after the New Year's Eve service. Me and my buddy got to talking with people, hanging out. Next thing you know, it's three in the morning. We never got to go out. See how the Lord works? But that was the growth after being come and saved because I got saved in October of 1992. And then that was that New Year's Eve of 1993. See, but I was still a babe. I was learning, trying to understand what's going on. But we're never to shame someone with the way they dress. We don't shame somebody if they haven't been to church in a long time either. So uh, uh, them types of people, because there's some people, maybe they, they, the church has left a bad taste in their mouth. And they decide that they want to show up maybe again. Maybe someone's dragged them out. Maybe, unfortunately, there's a funeral or something has happened that gets them back in there. And as a leaders, as pastors or anyone, as members of all of us, as Christians, we should never make no one feel ashamed that they uh, uh, ashamed them, that they didn't show it up where you been and, and shame them and call them out. We should never do them types of things. And then I have on here, as I mentioned before, the way that someone worship. Everyone, just because someone's quiet or sitting there or whatever, don't mean they don't uh, that, that they don't love the Lord. I'm an introvert. I'm not one to jump up and and that's fine. You're fine if that's how you want to praise and raise your hands and and and, and, and really go. Hey, my I'm having all the joy inside. I may have tears, but I'm forever thankful. I'm worshiping with inside. I may, I'm going to clap here and there, but I'm not one to just get all up. And, 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 and unfortunately for some of these people, it's a show. They want to show off. They want to show. So for him to do that, to bring the whole congregation back to where this guy was, surround him, what kind of crap is that? What kind of pastor does that? I mean, that, 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 I mean, that's, that's uncalled for. You don't do that to people and stuff and, and, and put them under this type of pressure. You know, yeah, you need to be acting like us because we're getting into it. We're sweaty. We're all worked up. We're fired up. What about you? Not everybody that comes. And see, this is the thing. Not everyone that comes to church, they're not saved. I mean, that's the problem, too. A lot of people that's these pastors and people within the, uh, uh, in the realm of society now that the church think that they just focus right on the flock, forgetting about the loss, forgetting that your door should be open. People should be, you should be 
seeking and hoping that the lost will come through them doors that or if you're discipling and teaching your members properly and things and that they will bring others to the church so that you that they get there and then that word of god is sharper than any two-edged sword the word of god will begin to work on that heart the spirit will begin holy spirit will begin to work on them and do the transformation who do we think we are surrounding people pointing them out as if that we've got this magical power to turn people around to make them do what we want to do. That's shameful. That is shameful and it's a disgrace. And I'm going to call it for what it is. And I have on here, these same types of pastors. Get ready. Get ready. These same types of pastors, because there's a group of pastors and, and many of them are on the internet that they, they become famous. They all, some of them hang together. This is the thing. I tell you, they all they all kind of group together, some of these folks. These are the same pastors that shame people during the pandemic. They the same pastors that shame people during the pandemic. We ain't going to get into all of that because that'll take a few more minutes to get into that. But we know the, the Greg Locks of the world and, and, and many others shame people during the pandemic for various reasons. Then I have on here. These same types of pastors and, and, and their followers, and many of them, they shame people for who they voted for. So if you didn't vote for the particular person that they supported, then they shame you and don't want you in their church and don't want you to be bothered with them. What kind of stuff is that? What kind of pastor leader does that? See, this is the kind of silliness. And you think that God's judgment ain't upon the church? This is the silliness that goes on. And then I have on here these same types of pastors or leaders or whoever, they the same ones that will shame you if you, your family members or friends fall into sin. Instead of trying to, as we all try to build that bridge and help each other and pull each other up, shame you if you fall into sin. They will shame find out your daughter or somebody then got someone pregnant or that your child is pregnant and they come, they will shame them. They will shame them. And a lot of these people will leave the church, find out that something didn't happen within a family. Somebody that, we're, no, none of us are perfect. You know, our families, we all got stuff that goes on. It's unfortunate. Some stuff is controlled and some stuff we can't control, but we should never be shamed for anybody that has fallen into something. Did the prodigal son get shamed when he decided to take his inheritance and run off and do his own thing? No, his father, which is a picture of Christ, watch the road, look, look forward to the day that he will come home. And how dare us shame people that have fallen on hard times, fallen for certain things, no, we continue to love. No, we continue to preach and let them know, okay, at the same time, but we don't shame them. And that's a problem that goes on within the church today. We've got a problem in society. The church is in big trouble. We'll have to continue to call it out. We'll have to continue to talk about issues the church went away from. We continue to talk about Satan and all of his devices. And what do we do? Punch them right in between the chops. Evangelism for God is your channel. If you're new, consider subscribing. Hit like coming along for the journey because we're going to continue marching on. We don't want this. This shame thing is a problem. These people, they are arrogant. It's another, they're arrogant. The shame is a form of their, their self-righteousness is what it boils down to. They're prideful and they're self-righteous and they have no place in the kingdom of God with that crap. We're going to call it out. So until the next video, Take care. God bless.